All right, let's bring in the star of the night. News Nation's Elizabeth Vargas did a very difficult job and did it very, very well. I've seen a lot of these town halls, uh, my friend, and you got a lot of depth and breath out of the situation tonight uh, with those for the voters with you and all across the country. How'd it feel? Uh, well, thank you, Chris. Thank you, my friend. Uh, and uh, it was an interesting night. Um, you know, it was interesting hearing your conversation just now with James because that was by far the most tense moment of the hour and a half town hall. Uh, he had a really tough question for Bobby Kennedy Jr. and uh, really followed up on that and said, I'm sorry, blaming your staff doesn't cut it. Uh, why did you agree to speak for this group, Moms for Liberty? They were up advertising. You saw their picture, the picture of Bobby Kennedy, Moms for Liberty, all over social media for quite some time before he finally uh, canceled that appearance. So it was a it was a tough exchange. It was really interesting to watch. It was the one really, I think, close to uncomfortable, real uncomfortable moment in there. Um, that and maybe when a few of the, the doctor in the audience that was challenging him on vaccines and saying, what you're doing is crazy. How do we bring you... The doctor said, back to the side of science, and, and Robert Kennedy Jr. Said, thought he said, back to your senses. Um, the interesting thing, I thought, Chris, I'm not sure what, you know, what your highlights were, but I found it very interesting that he refused to pledge to back whoever the dom Democratic nominee of the party is. I think, in fact, we have a clip yeah, let's play of it. me asking him that because he talked all about being... Yeah, okay, let's play it. As a lifelong Democrat, as you just said very passionately, will you pledge to support whoever the dom Democratic nominee is, wh whoever it is, whether it's you, whether it's President Biden? Oh, I, of course I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. No, of course I'm not. I'm not so I listen. If you don't get the nomination, you won't support President Biden. I don't know what I'll do. Let's see how the Dem let's see what happens in this campaign. Let's see, you know, what if if people are living up to democratic values and having debates and having discussions and, you know, talking to each other, but I'm not going to buy... And if you feel that's not happening, would you then support a, a Republican uh, or run as I, an independent? I'm not, you know what? My plan is to win this election, and I don't have a plan B. You know, he's going to get one. What did you make of the exchange? You know, it was interesting because he initially off the top, without me having to even ask him, said, people have asked me, what, you know, why aren't you running as an independent? And I'm not an independent. I'm a Democrat. I mean, I've always been a Democrat. I'm a Democrat through and through. And yet by the end, when he says, I don't know if I'll support President Biden if he's the nominee, he's sounding more and more like somebody who might run as an independent or even support somebody else, which, you know, brings up that whole issue that many Democrats fear, which is that he's a sort of stocking horse candidate, someone there to wound Biden. Biden in the primaries and make him easy pickings in the general election to whichever Republican wins the nomination. So I thought that was a really interesting point there. Um, and then obviously, you know, his positions on Ukraine and Russia are uh, very different from what the Democratic voters um, who largely and consistently support President Biden and his policies uh, on Ukraine and his aid to Ukraine. The Republicans are not as unified. Um, in fact, only 30 percent, around 30 percent, support uh, providing aid to Ukraine. Uh, Democrats, it's a very big majority. He is not in step with the voters he's asking to back him in this primary on helping Ukraine and has a very, you know, he denies that he's a, 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 a sympathetic to Vladimir Putin, but when he is explaining his positions, often sounds like Putin was just forced to do this. Um, mm. you know, he had no other choice but to invade Ukraine. Yeah, I, so I think you identified a, a really interesting point. It's a very interesting point. needle to thread. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.